Well, good morning, friends. And as you can tell from the opening scene, I am making some more charcoal to make some more gunpowder. And this is actually in response to just having watched a video from the channel Everything Black Powder with Jake talking a little bit more about rerunning some of the experiments. And without realizing it, at the time when I did my shooting session with my new model Navy I had showed everybody at the end of how clean that gunpowder was and having watched previously what a few of the other folks that are making it talked about letting it mill longer produces better gunpowder so that got me to thinking because with that particular batch of gunpowder that I was using I had milled it twice so just let me explain for just a moment please all of us that are making gunpowder we all pretty much have convinced ourselves that when you take when you open the lid to the tumbler and if all the media is on top your gunpowder is finished well in a couple of batches that I had done I had realized that I was achieving getting my media on top of the powder at about seven eight nine hours just depending on if I was busy doing other things so what I did with this particular batch of juniper is once I opened the lid and saw that the media was on top I took a stick and I stirred it all up again and then I went to remilling it whether that actually had anything to do with it or not I don't know but it makes sense so once I did that I got it all out I um, put a little bit of water in it I pucked it run it through my coffee grinder now what I what I do is anything smaller than 3F that gets through the screen I put it back in the ball mill and mix it again until it's all that you know that fine flowery flowery mix and then I wet it down puck that and then break it up and repeating that process whatever 4F falls through I put it back into the ball mill and I'm wondering if doing that has not produced, at least with this particular batch, a cleaner burning powder. I don't know, but, you know, I do have it marked on here, milled twice. Also explaining that whatever the 4F was got put back into the ball mill and remilled and put back into this can. Now, over the past summer, you can see that I've done some experimenting with some of the woods on my property, and one of those experiments was barberry. Now, I have a little bit of barberry left. Now, this I've milled once, with the exception of the 4F being remilled a second time. Now, when I experimented with this, I experimented with it with my long guns. I really didn't experiment with these through my black powder revolvers as much as I would have liked to have done to kind of compare because there again I only just milled this the first time so this time around what I've done is I've gone onto my property and I found some some of the bigger barberry trees that have dead decaying branches now I know this particular piece has got some mold or uh, not mold but um, some sort of fungus growth. I scraped all of that off and I chopped these up into smaller pieces and that's what you saw cooking in the beginning of this video. Now I do want to refer to something that Jake talked about the media. I've been using lead balls and there's some thoughts out there regarding leaving lead powder behind in your mix. Well, I don't know whether that's really true or not, just simply because if you go back 
through the video and you will see the amount of time that I've been using lead media for the media to collapse I can take this 50 caliber round ball put it into my micrometer and actually this one mics out at 0 0.492 so this is actually a little bit bigger coming out of the Lee cast mold than what's advertised I can even turn it around a little bit move it around and I can get 0.899 and all of us know that you don't get a perfectly centrifugal round ball coming out of these molds but the point that I'm getting at with as much gunpowder as I have made in my tumblers it does not appear to me at least that we are getting lead powder into the gunpowder so what I'm doing what, what I plan on doing is this batch of barberry charcoal that I'm making when I get to the point that I'm going to be making gunpowder I will mill that twice specifically do the same thing when all the media is on top stir it all back up and mix it again in the same the same process so Jake if you happen to be watching this to get to the short of all of this I kind of think you're on the right path about milling it twice because in my opinion with what portion of the gunpowder that begins to stick in the bottom of your container that's that's there's there's no indication that that's properly milled it's just that's what's stuck on the bottom so that's kind of why I'm, I'm doing this I'm filming this now for you know future use I don't know how much in the future I'm gonna get to this point in uploading this video or at least this portion I may just decide to do it and you guys can just follow along um, as I progress so that's where I'm at with this because I do want to see if this barberry has the capability of burning cleaner than it did in my long guns uh, just simply because the test results showed me that it's it's a, a hot burning powder um, but it looks like the pressures remained consistent and with that being stated I am looking into getting a chronograph because I want to see for myself exactly you know what this barberry does especially since I know this batch has been milled roughly once and I will be making more milling it twice plus whatever 4F I have milling that and you know breaking that down to 3F now I want to talk just a little bit about my Army San Marco 51 Navy um I had to purchase a new wedge for it just simply because the factory wedge as we all know back in the day were not hardened properly and this particular Army San Marco wedge like a lot of the wedges of the day started deforming so I ended up going on eBay somebody actually had a Uberti wedge for 27 bucks so I jumped at that I did have to fit it not that the wedge was too big for the slot in the Army San Marco I actually had to take the hammer and the wedge on my anvil and kind of flatten it out a little bit and I got it to fit really really well so I'm anxious to shoot it and see how that's gonna hold up and the other thing that I've done is I've made myself another jig so that right here at the cone it's at 11 degrees and on this Army San Marco in fact on all my uh, 36 calibers I just went ahead and did it because I'm a firm believer that a smoother transition does help and especially now since I am you know going to a .380 round ball and reaming the throat of the cylinders so I'm anxious to see how that's gonna work out like my 1860 Army I think it's gonna work out just fine and help to improve the accuracy but I won't know until I get out here and do some shooting and I probably should go check on that batch of charcoal I'm making I don't want to overcook it but hey if it overcooks I'll just take my air compressor and just blow all of the 
all of the um, dust out of it, all of the ash, and then just mix what I have. So friends, um, thanks for watching what's like right here. And once I get this into the editing program, try to decide what I want to do with it later. So you friends, have a great day, and uh, we'll talk with you later. Bye.